Williamsburg and Greenpoint in Brooklyn have become a magnet for newcomers to New York, drawn by the vibrant cultural scene and sweeping waterfront views. But not always was like today. Not long ago, the area was badly polluted and had hardly any river access. Neighbors share common stories of strong fights for environmental causes and affordable housing, among other battles. In the summer of 2022, these struggles were documented via artwork and memorabilia in the bilingual English-Spanish exhibition, Our Voices Seen and Heard, 50 Years of Protest, Nuestras Voces Vistas Escuchada, 50 Años de Protesta, at El Museo Los Sures and at the Greenpoint Library and Environmental Education Center, a branch of the New York Public Library. As the exhibition title suggests, the show marks the 50th anniversary of the Southside United HDFC Los Sures, commonly known as Los Sures. It takes its name from the southern part of Williamsburg, which for many years was predominantly populated by people of Latin American descent. The organization was founded to respond to an epidemic of landlord abandonment, withdrawal of city services, and illegal evictions by landlords. Its initial mission was to rebuild the community through direct action, advocacy, and organized struggle, and to maintain it for the people that live there. The exhibit displayed posters, flyers, paintings, banners, t-shirts, buttons, press clippings, cartoons, comics, murals, photos, protest signs, and other objects. Exhibit contributors included community members and local organizations. The show recounts a history of activism, its challenges, and its victories, said Katie Lampatarsky, activist, a longtime Greenpoint resident, and one of the show's curators. The mission of the show, which we hope is on the walls here and in the cabinets in Greenpoint, is to highlight and illuminate the many struggles of two neighborhoods separately and also two neighborhoods together. They're very different neighborhoods and they're the same also, uh, but they are different in terms of their makeup. Um, one is historically and perhaps still uh, mostly uh, white, historically working class neighborhood, immigrant neighborhood, that's Greenpoint and Williamsburg, uh, the same as that, but also uh, Latino and Greenpoint also has Latino um, too. And the show really is trying to show that we have struggles and where off people are often exploited because of their economic class and because of their racial class both those things and so the wall the walls here are trying to um show that commonality of struggle and of victory because there are a lot of victories here too Another mission of the show um, was to showcase the artistry of protest. Um, you can see on the walls here that it's not just text, it's also visuals. And so often creative visuals and creative means to bring people in. Uh, one of the powers of this community is the artistry in the community. At one time there were many galleries in the neighborhood and artists, um, and there still are. And that creativity you can see on the walls here, um, along with the photographs and the history. Um, another mission of the show was to inspire and to educate. So to educate uh, about the history of all these struggles. Um, many people who live in Greenpoint and Williamsburg or come and visit have no idea that at one point you couldn't get to the waterfront. You wanted to watch the fireworks on the East River? You couldn't get to the waterfront. There was no place that you could go to. You might be able to crawl through a fence uh, if it hadn't been patched up. Um, so 
it's a way to show what used to be here in order to inspire others uh, to that change can be made. And in that vein, one thing we tried to show within the show is that really it was a combination of four P's. Okay, so it's um, the people, so that's the activists. It's the politicians, and it's the press. Really, I would say without fail, within all of these struggles, these battles that you see around this room, these incredible, incredibly difficult things of getting rid of a transfer station and having a park instead, um, for example, or the battle for the power plant, which took seven years, was really a combination of people, politicians, press, which was often local press, especially to begin with, and then bringing in sometimes uh, professionals when need be to help to uh, inform and to um, uh, for legal matters sometimes too. Williamsburg resident Chris Sroka is another curator. She's an artist and organized labor agent. The message of the exhibition, she said, is to stand up and speak out. What I've been seeing around here, um, actually I was speaking with a, a visitor to the show yesterday about how you would see crosses painted all over the place representing uh, the deceased, and that was always a little bit scary. But I have to admit, I've always felt pretty safe here because I, I talk to people, I fit in with the community. I've always found the community to be terrifically welcoming. Actually, it was more welcoming back then when it was a majority Latino community than it is now that uh, the gentry are coming in. It's, it's a less welcoming neighborhood. And um, when when I talk to the, the newer people in the neighborhood, I try and get them interested in something personal and small, like, like um, your rent. Do you know if you're overpaying on your rent? You can go to the website, you can file for a rent rollback if you know the landlord has taken advantage of you and the people for you. But the sad thing is, I don't get much interest. You know, that seems to be, seems like it would be a way of getting people interested in, in knowing what's going on more with, with their buildings, with their neighbors, but it just doesn't seem to take hold. I, I think they're more peripatetic than we have been. There's so many avenues and it's, people are so needed to stand up and speak. And there are so few of us who are actually willing to do it. My beginning in activism was, as I had mentioned, in organized labor, which pretty much led me to have a lot of empathy with the workers' justice pro project. But they are basically a union working with domestic workers, and it takes a lot of guts to stand up. I know that, and these ladies know that. It takes guts to do it. It's way easy to sit back and complain, but if you... If you're passionate enough, head up and start doing it, and it will come to you. You don't necessarily have to be active only in one area, but whatever touches you most closely and whatever community is most supportive of you, then stand up. That is, that's what real activism is. Stand up and speak. Among the organizations which provided exhibition material were El Puente, Greenpoint Williamsburg Waterfront Task Force, Stop the Plastic Park, and the Workers' Justice Project. Other contributions came from artists as well as scholars. One of those academics was Dr. Lara Alonso. She studied the Williamsburg-based organization of cleaning women workers 
as a movement to build community and get empowerment. Um, what I study in my dissertation is how a group of people come to see themselves as a community and then what do they do in order to not only be in a community but to become a political subject. A political subject that mobilizes its voice uh, in order to, to fight political, politically for um, their own objectives. The exhibit organizers wanted to convey a feeling of diverse but united communities. For example, curator Denise Arroyo created a mural that welcomed visitors to the exhibition, in which she highlighted the coexistence of children, youth, and adults, as well as plants and animals, all living together. Some of the things that have happened because of gentrification, making a clean neighborhood safer, bringing in a lot of new stores and stuff like that. But what I don't like is that my culture as a Puerto Rican woman kind of got scratched out of the neighborhood. That was a big thing in Los Sures, that you see block parties for Puerto Rican Day or block parties in general for any, any neighbor, any ethnicity that was Spanish, because we're very mixed Spanish-wise. We were Puerto Rican, Dominican, Mexican. We had a whole bunch of us. And when gentrification took over, you, they all left, basically. We have like a small group left. And it's a little bit hard because sometimes I'll go into a place and I'll feel out of place in my own neighborhood. And it, it hurts a little bit. But I guess have, you have to learn how to not only accept progress, but change with the progress as well, and also teach with it. And this is the whole point of this show, where we're accepting the progress. We know that it's there, we, we understand it. But this show, this show is meant to also express that this, if it wasn't for these fights, these different protests, we wouldn't be the Williamsburg that we are today and the Greenpoint that we are today. At the show's opening, Juan Ramos, executive director of the Los Suras organization, said the museum's exhibition provided the residents of Williamsburg and Greenpoint with a voice to tell their own stories. Seeing here tonight is really a collection, not just of art, not just of you know history, but what you're seeing is a collection of struggle and movement in this community that has really allowed us to keep the footprint of the Latino community here in particular. Um, you know, you see work from El Puente, you see work from St. Nick's, you see work from Los Sures and others. Um, but I'm proud to say as the executive of Los Sures that Los Sures has been the backbone and probably one of the root organizations of this community. And that without us, truly affordable housing will not be in um, For the struggle of all my predecessors, my board members who were there from the very beginning, um, you know, to everyone who volunteers in our organization. This is truly not just an organization in name, it's an organization in movement, because that's what we consider ourselves for, for five decades, right? This is our 50th anniversary, you know, kind of going, going with the theme, 50 years of protest. So I can't think of a year that we haven't been protesting something, a year that we haven't been outspoken in something. Um, it just, it, it's really an opportunity tonight for you guys to see that struggle for you guys to see those movements, um, but also to say to yourselves, um, who are we in this community if we're still here? How are we not only you know, embracing the newcomers, but how are we activating them to make sure that we all collectively preserve the humanity that we've been able to create here as a, com as a community? Um, because it really has happened in a way that hasn't happened. I was talking to Asher about this earlier, we were discussing how the movements here in you know, Williamsburg really haven't been replicated anywhere else. You have organizations that have been here working together in unity, you know, when in other places of the, of the, of the city, they work in disunity, right? Um, they don't really come together because they're too busy checking off boxes on what it is they're trying to achieve. But here we see that, you know, without fighting for affordable housing like Los Sures, there, there can't be people here. And without fighting for environmental justice like in Puente, there wouldn't be safe and sound people here, right? That fighting without, not fighting for jobs, 
I say next, there wouldn't be people here. That's my cooking. Excuse my <laughs> uh, so, you know, what you guys are witnessing tonight is, is really historic. Um, it's something that we're proud of as, as an organization um, to be a part of. Um, and I also let you know that in the space that you're standing, this wasn't open by accident. We purposely opened this spot in 2012 um, because we were seeing ourselves erased from this community. And we wanted to make sure that we preserve the history of local artists, but also the history of the movements in this community, because if we don't do it ourselves, no one's going to do it for us. And even when they do it for us, if it's not by us, for us, it's not for us. Right? So we have to understand that um, we have to be at the forefront of those conversations, at the forefront of you know, telling those stories, because it's through our eyes and through our voices that it can really be told. Um, because if not, the people telling the story will tell you that um, you know, we left quietly when we've been fighting fiercely. Um, and I'll just leave it there. Thank you all. These voices were also heard at the opening of the exhibit at the Greenpoint Library and Environmental Education Center. Akasha Thompson, the Center's Environmental Justice Coordinator, hosted an event where attendees could see examples of documentaries that have addressed issues in these neighborhoods. This land should be the people's land. He embodied himself both worlds, the people and the city. You can't have a better example. At the same event, a panel with veterans of the movement narrated their experiences as activists. Thompson encouraged the public to continue advocating and working together to educate people on activism. I was very excited because the, the library has long planned, you know, we've been closed for so long, we've been long planned to have a series of panels and teach-ins on the individual fights in the community. And so this is a real preemptive uh, event to get to look over these different things that you all have been involved in. And so I will definitely be reaching out to you all to um, hopefully have you participate and also you know, help teach our you know, next generation of activists who are newly activated in, that in the last couple of years. We have a lot of people who don't know anything about what's happening in this community. And we have people sitting in this room who can educate everybody on what's happened here and, and how, the fight can, how the fight can happen and how you can advocate for your community. Another speaker was Joseph Lintel. He had represented the local district in the New York State Assembly for 17 years. I remember some kids who were uh, friends, acquaintances, some of, most of them Latino, some of them Ukrainian, and some of them Polish, who died at the site of the destruction of Williamsburg and part of Greenpoint when they built the BQE. Mm -hmm. And talk about the beginning of environmental issues and mm. environmental problems. You really have to start there because it really separated our community and divided us in a way that we had to really work hard to be united to fight what was about to come. Also, other activists shared their memories. What I would say to folks is, it's, it, uh, use, our history, use our history to make our tomorrows better. Come together. Don't let culture, gender, religion, uh, class, don't let it get in your way. If you want to build a real community, that's diversity. Mm -hmm. right? That's where people come together. That's part of, I think, what came to my childhood, that thing. Mm -hmm. I have a blessed work with uh, really Barbara Schliff, who I was hoping to go talk uh, also, but, but she came in a couple of years after me, and we worked together for all that time. Badly. And one of the things we learned to teach people well, is. Well, each other. Mostly talking to each other, right? Mostly, mostly <laughs> but, but what you learn is that you only lose by giving up, by not fighting. That as long as you keep fighting, you'll always win. You'll always get the results you need, the struggles you need. Uh, and that's been a blessing. So, uh, Luis also, one of the things he always talked about were his roots um, in the Puerto Rican independence movement. Um, he talked about his, his mother um, and her love of, of plants and things, but also he had the connection to, to Lares, where his, um, his family his, on his mother's side was from. Uh, and just always had that deep connection um, to, to activism. Uh, and at El Puente, um, I think you know, 
that sense of the least God of the environment from, from his mother just was always really present. Like we're in this community, um, there's all of this uh, degradation and depredation around um, all this toxins. What, what do we do about it? Um, the powerful thing that Wendy did was really empower, empower young people that Toxic Avengers was the first environmental group, um, not the last one. Um, myself as a community muralist, um, the work was always really interesting because the, the organizers, um, Jose and Luis and other environmental um, activists, um, would gather the information, do the research, um, bring it to us in the mural group, and, and we would create murals, we'd create banners for demonstrations, working with um, the different other organizations in the neighborhood. Uh, one of the big things that we worked on over the years was tied to um, transfer stations and all of the other things that were um, causing low air quality in the neighborhood, particularly with PM10s, uh, was a series of surveys that when they did over a number of years with an epidemiological group called SIA, uh, where they gathered data from thousands of households um, about um, rates of asthma, causes of asthma, um, just a lot of different um, information that was then published in um, an epidemiological journal. Um, we were able then to create a, a mural um, that was presented in the neighborhood in a large visual form then could um, bring that yeah. This place that Los Fures is mm -hmm. do with this stuff. Um, and I found it very physically very depressing. And people were living in harsh conditions, no essential services, many people had no heat and hot water, you know, and it was really it was really a, a kind of a depressing thing. But what I saw was and what I felt was that there was a vibrant neighborhood. People were um, they wanted people, many of the people that were still there had no other resources and that's why they were, were, were still living in, in buildings in these conditions, but they also wanted to stay there and they wanted to get together and figure out how they can improve things. So together, I mean, I had no really experience or no knowledge, but we just worked together and realized that organizing was the way to get improvements. So, um... We really were, we formed tenant associations. We worked with buildings. People would come to us. After a while, they knew we were trying to help people and, and get get things together and see what people could do. And we formed a tenant associations all around the neighborhood, where people were able to assert their learn their rights, assert their rights, and um, we worked closely with Brooklyn Legal Services with Marty. As you said, we kind of formed a partnership where. We would organize the building, we would have an attorney come to the meetings with the tenants so they would feel comfortable that, you know, um, it would be represented. We had rent strikes. I mean, what I hear today now is like, oh, a rent strike is like some kind of radical thing that's not used. I mean, just, it was constantly, that was kind of the, the mechanism to get people together, together and to let landlords know people aren't going to pay their rent if they don't have services. And it was also a way for the landlord to get the tenants into and then for the tenants to assert their rights and pay their defenses. Then the reason they weren't paying is that they needed these services and repairs that they were supposed to have. So that was kind of like, you know, the, the main thing of organizing. And, and we branched out into more community organizing on different issues too. We worked closely with the, the about the, the um, power plant, and, you know, to get power plant to the neighborhood. We understood so that issue. But really, we focused on housing and realized that those were the, that was the basis for people to work with them and other and other um, issues in the neighborhood. In August, El Museo de los Sures opened another show, which sounded the same thing. It was a photo exhibition by Fernand Luna, a photographer, activist, and former Williamsburg resident. The show documented the life and community action of the South Side of Williamsburg from the 1970s through the 1990s, when the area was burdened by absentee landlords, lack of city services, and a high crime rate, which forced the displacement of many families. Um, the mission of this show is because I need to balance the point of view that was initiated by um, a director uh, in a video that he did in 1984, um, which uh, he made the cartoonish of the community. And I was working in 1976, it started with Los Sutis in 1976, and it doesn't show all the work and effort that the community was doing to help the elevate, the, to stabilize and elevate the community. 
and this work reflects all of that. Uh, the different, various different non-for-profit community groups and, uh, and uh, it shows case how the people stand up against all the elements and they fight back and uh, they, the community is what it is today because of all those efforts. In an interview, Francis Lucerna, co-founder and president of El Puente, addressed the youth of the neighborhood. I think what keeps me hopeful and keeps me inspired are the young people of El Puente. When I say young people, I'm talking about the six-year-olds all the way to um, the 60-year-olds, you know, and I see, say that in terms of, you know, how and in which way I even continue to be inspired, uh, you know, by the young people of El Puente. Um, I think, you know, we see a moment in time when all of the substantial movements for justice in this, in this country, and I would say in the world, are being led by young people. Uh, young people who have a vision, young people who are really clear about their own power um, and their own will um, to self-determination. After the exhibition's extensive documentation of the half century of neighborhood struggle, those who participate in the advance of the community can assert our voices were seen and heard over 50 years of protest.